In this video tutorial for Grand Prix Race Manager, we will cover step 5, which is setting up your competition groups. This tutorial is using version 22 of the software. However, much of what we will cover applies to other versions of Grand Prix Race Manager. The software allows you to set up as many competition groups as you like. It can also subdivide your race groups into subgroups, if needed. Some people get confused by this step, so I will try to explain the competition group structure as best as I can. When we talk about groups in the software, we mean your competition groups. You can have any number of groups. You can base your competition groups on age level, skill level, or whatever naturally works for your organization. You can have any number of racers in a group. Though, some scheduling methods do have limitations on the number of minimum and maximum racers that they can accommodate. Each race group will end up with a race schedule, where members of that group will only compete against other members in that group. There are two exceptions to that rule, called a Grand Finals Round and a Grand Turtle Round, where racers from multiple groups will run in an overall race. We will cover such rounds later, in the video for Step 9. You should be following that so far. Where many people get tripped up is the concept of subgroups. Subgroups allow you to subdivide your race groups. You can have any number of subgroups for each race group. One big thing to know is that subgroups have absolutely no bearing on race scheduling. Scheduling is only based on the race group. So, racers from different subgroups within a group can face each other. Where subgroups are handy is to break down the group standings into finer detail. Though, there are some cases where you may not need to use subgroups. When considering your competition group structure, you do need to also consider how the software displays the race standings. The software allows you to view the race standings at three different levels. The first is the round level. A round is all the vehicles in each group generally racing a specified number of times in each track lane. You can do just one round of racing or multiple rounds. The software will rank all racers in a round, from first to the last, regardless of what group or subgroup those racers belong to. The next level of standings is at the group level. The software will rank all racers in a group, from first to the last, regardless of the subgroup those racers belong to. If using subgroups, you can view the standings down to the subgroup level. The software will rank all racers in a subgroup, from first to the last. You can base your speed awards on any of these three levels. Here is a diagram showing those standings levels. You can view the standings for any of these groups, subgroups or all of them together, which is the round standings. Each group will get their own race schedule. Anyone within the race group will race against other racers in their race group. There are some considerations when setting up your race groups. One consideration is how you intend to score each heat. You can score by times or by points. With time scoring, racers are running against the clock, not really against the racers they are going head-to-head -head against. This provides flexibility in setting up your race groups and allows you all three levels of standings. Point scoring is based on the finish order of a heat. The first place finisher will get one point, second place will get two points, and so on. With point scoring, it matters who a racer runs head-to-head -head against as it is based on finish order. Since scheduling is controlled at the group level, racers will compete head-to-head -head against other racers in their group. So, their pool of opponents can be outside of their subgroup. As such, it is not fair to compare point tallies for racers down to the subgroup level. So, the software does not permit the use of subgroups when scoring by points. Another consideration in setting up your competition groups is the size of each race group. Some scheduling methods have a minimum number of racers that they will support. So, if you have some really small groups, you may need to combine them to get enough racers to build a schedule. It is also more exciting to watch racers go up against a variety of opponents, as opposed to watching them racing the same opponents over and over, with generally the same outcome. 
With time scoring, you can easily combine those smaller groups into a single group and then use subgroups to subdivide those racers for awards purposes. Racers are racing the clock, not the racers in the other track lanes, so it really does not matter who they face, head to head. With point scoring, you would need to add in some dummy racers in order to meet that minimum number of racers to build a schedule for. Still another consideration is the number of trophies that you want to give out. For example, if you only have one set of speed trophies to give out, you can create just one race group with a subgroup for each of your different age or skill groups. The speed trophies would then be based on the group standings. While you could just put all racers into the same group and not worry about subgroups, in that scenario, viewing the standings at the subgroup level can come in handy. Some parents do like to know how their child fared when compared to their peers. It might make things more clear to show you some examples. These are all based on a race for an elementary school. In our first example, we have each grade level listed along with the number of racers. Each grade level has a reasonable number of racers, so there would be no issues with making each grade level be their own competition group. In this scenario, there is no need for subgroups. You can score by either times or points. In our second example, two of the grade levels don't have many racers to them. One option is to combine these two groups together. Then create a subgroup for each of those grade levels. So, after racing is done, you can look at the subgroup standings to hand out awards for those grade levels. Note, when using subgroups, you will need to create at least one subgroup for every group. With this option, subgroups are needed. With subgroups being used, you can only score by times. If you are scoring by points, the other option would be to add one or more dummy racers so you can get a schedule built. With this option, there is no need to use subgroups. You also have the option of scoring by times or by points. In our third example, we have only one race group. Each of the same grade levels from our last example are subgroups under the one race group. In this scenario, first graders can compete against sixth graders since they are all in the same race group. Though, remember, when scoring by times, it really does not matter who is in the next lane, as racers are running against the clock. In this example, subgroups are needed. Time scoring must also be used. In our last example, we have the same school group and subgroups. The difference is that we are adding in an adult group and its corresponding subgroup. With adults being in their own race group, they will not compete against the grade school children. In this example, subgroups are needed. Time scoring must also be used. Hopefully, these examples remove any confusion that you may have on groups and subgroups. If you need to enable or disable the use of subgroups, you can go to the software settings screen to do so. That is covered in the video for step 2. Now that we have covered group and subgroups, we will cover how to create the competition group structure. Note, if you will be importing your racers from a CSV file, you can skip this step. When importing racers from a CSV file, the groups and subgroups will be created automatically for you. On the overview tab of the main screen, click on the shortcut button for step 5 to manually create your groups and subgroups. Since no competition groups have been created yet, the software will ask you if you wish to use the organizational structure wizard to help create those. If you are from one of the organizations that commonly runs these type of races, this wizard can be useful, otherwise, you can skip using the wizard. I will go ahead and show three scenarios of using the wizard, so I will click on the Yes button. First, select your type of organization. If it is not one of these, select the Other option. For this first scenario I will select Awana. Then click on the Next button. If adults will be racing, as well as children, check the adults will be competing box. Note, the race scoring method that you are using does have an impact on the group and subgroup structure, so it is shown here. 
then select how you want to race everyone. You can race them by age group or you can race everyone mixed together. However, if you race everyone mixed together and adults are racing, that will mean that adults and children will race head to head against each other. That may not be desirable. You can also opt to race all of the children together, but race the adults separately. For this first demonstration, I will select by age group and click on the finish button. The software has created different race groups based on age level. The wizard changed the group labeling in the software to now display as age group. The wizard determined that I do not need subgroups, so it disabled them. From here, you can add, edit, or delete groups as needed to suit your needs. Before I show you how to do that, I want to show you a couple of other scenarios with the wizard. To do this, I need to delete out the existing race groups. I have no other data in the data file, so I will select to delete everything. Type yes in all capital letters to confirm. I do not want to make a backup of the data file, so I will uncheck this box. Then click on the OK button. For scenario 2, I will click on the step 5 shortcut button and click on the yes button to open up the wizard. This time I will select Cub Scouts and click on the Next button. Adults will be competing, so I will check on that box. This time I will select Erase Everyone Mixed Together and then click on the Finish button. The wizard has created one race group, which is the entire Cub Scout pack. Each one of the Cub Scout ranks has been made into a subgroup. Since adults are competing, there is also a subgroup for them. The wizard also changed the label for subgroups to display as rank. We will do one last scenario. I'll delete out all race groups again using the delete everything option. I will open up the wizard again. This time I will select Royal Rangers. Adults will be competing, so I will check on that box. Now, I will select to raise children together, adults separate, and click on the Finish button. The wizard has just created two race groups, one for adults and one for youth. Adults will race separate from the youth. When I select the youth group, I will see the subgroups that it has created for that group. All of the youth will race mixed together since they are all in the same race group. That is how to use the organizational setup wizard. You can add, edit, or delete these groups and subgroups as needed, which is what I will demonstrate in the next part of this video. Before I show you that, I am going to delete out everything again. I will also change the subgroup label back to the default. Let's go back to the Competition Groups tab. To manually add a group, click on the Group Lists Add button. The software will remind you that you can skip this step if you will be importing your racers from a CSV file. I want to manually create groups, so I will click on the Yes button. Type in the name of the group and then click on the Save button. Since we have subgroups turned on, the software will display a nag message reminding you that there needs to be at least one subgroup created for every group. If you don't want to see this nag message again, you can check the Do Not Display box. The software will ask you if you wish to create another group. I'll go ahead and create a couple more groups, so I'll click on the Yes button. When done adding groups, click on the No button. Now that I have my groups created, I will create subgroups for each of these groups. Note, the subgroup can have the same name as the group, if you like. First, select the race group to add subgroups to. Click on the subgroup lists, Add button. Enter the subgroup name and save that. I'll add another subgroup. 
I'll repeat that now for my other groups. To edit a group, select the group from the list. You can then either click on the group list's edit button or double click on the group name. Make any changes that you need and then save it. To edit a subgroup, first select its group from the group list. Now select the subgroup from the subgroup list. Click on the subgroup list's edit button or double click on the subgroup name. To delete a group, select the group from the list. Then click on the group delete button or press the delete key on the keyboard. You will be asked to confirm the deletion. If you confirm, the group and all of its subgroups will be deleted. To delete a subgroup, first select its group from the group list. Now select the subgroup from the subgroup list. Click on the subgroup delete button or press the delete key on the keyboard. For more information on competition groups and subgroups, you can click on either of the small help buttons on this tab. Now let's go back to the overview tab by clicking on the home button. If you use the organizational structure wizard, the completed box for step 5 will have been automatically checked for you. If you manually entered the groups and subgroups, you can go ahead and check the step is completed once you are done. This completes our video for Step 5, Define Competition Groups. Stay tuned for our video for Step 6, where we will cover defining awards.